Hey, what's the deal, guys? It's Mr. Legit. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, if you guys have never been here, I'm a roofer here out of the Portland, Oregon, and today we're at a suburb in Ridgefield, Washington. And if you look behind me, what we're gonna be doing is showing you guys how to do this uh, shed-style roof. So let's get into the video, guys. All right, guys, so what we have behind us is a sh uh, roof, a shed roof. And matter of fact, this gentleman, he called us up earlier this morning and I, and I was in my office and typically we don't do roofs like this because it's just a new construction. It's a really small roof that we typically don't do. And you know, he, was, he just got this done and it's beautiful tongue and groove. And really he just doesn't want this to get wet at all. So I was listening to the conversation to uh, the, the appointment center and I'm like, you know what, you know what, Push, put it on hold. So I picked up the phone, I started talking to him and this dude's really cool. He wasn't too far away from where our office is. So I was like, you know what, let's just do that. So we worked out a little deal over the phone and uh, that's what led us here. But we came out here and this place is just absolutely beautiful. He's got probably, I don't know how many acres, five acres or something like that. But uh, he's got this uh, really cool eagle, which we'll show you uh, a little bit about that. But so, what, so we came out here, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to pinpoint what colors he has on his house right now to get the uh, the best match and he did say that he has some shingles in the barn uh back here so let's go back there and uh, see if we can find exactly what color matches the house right here right guys let's see if we can find this uh he said that he said that he had a little bit back here um and that's the thing is like you guys have to ask the homeowner a lot of times if they have because sometimes they'll put it under in their garage somewhere so uh let's go see if he has any back here uh oh he's got a sweet car though what is that i think it's sweet the pack in i don't even know what that is some maybe someone in the comments could tell me that thing looks badass though uh oh look what we have here look at this we got we got the oh man this stuff these paper wrappers from gaf timberline what is that these haven't been around for like 10 years probably oh we got Z, the z ridge so this ridge right here z ridge it's z ridge because you take it like that and you fold it like a Z, I guess. So we'll have to go pick up some of that stuff. But this looks like hickory. Let's see, Let's see if we can find the color of it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Look, hickory. See that hickory right here. Look, what's the date on this? 2012. Yeah. Nine two 2012. All right, guys, we just pulled up at Roofline Supply, which is SRS, to get our uh, materials. And one thing I don't think I talked about over there, you guys gotta make sure you guys order up all the materials. In this case, what we're gonna be do doing, I already made a little list on the way over here. So in this case, so what we're gonna be doing is order 80 feet of starter, 22 feet of ridge, five one by three um, drip metal, four sticks of T-metal, 13 bundles of Hickory Timberline JF, and one box of inch and a quarter. But so we, we uh, figured out exactly what we needed. Then we came here and guess what guys? They, you, can't even, you can't even go in the store, it's will call only. So we just ordered it up inside of the truck. Now we're sitting out here waiting for, uh, for, the, for, the, for our supplies to arrive. And I'm kind of worried like we have, uh, we, have, we have four squares, but this is gonna be a little bit of weight for this truck back here. So we got the compressor, got this, uh, got the unlayment. We're gonna load it up and we'll meet you guys back at the job. doing is we're going to be putting up uh we backed this up we have all the materials we need we're going to put a ladder and um so we can just basically get off the truck step right here and get up on the roof so it should be pretty quick and easy that's the best way to, to do this i've done this many times um it's just the best way to do it unless you know a local supplier wants to come out here for four or five squares but i highly doubt that so let's go ahead and load this stuff up guys what we're gonna do is teach you guys how to do this in five easy steps so this is a pretty basic roof it doesn't have much valleys but so the first step is paper underlayment whatever you choose 
Now for this, we're gonna be using the Owens Corning deck defense on this shed re-roof or this new shed roof, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is put staples right in the center of it. Don't put it like this because when you try to adjust it, you won't be able to adjust it. So put it in the center, roll it out. Then you can do your adjusting once you roll it out. And sometimes you can go off and in, down an inch normally. What That's what we'll do. But in this case, I'm not sure if he's gonna have gutters and I don't really want him seeing this, you know? So uh, we're gonna keep actually keep it on the wood or maybe a little bit above the wood. That way it doesn't hang in. All right, then what you guys do is you put it again in the center of it, in the center, and line it up with this line, the top line. Every, every underlayment has a line on the top. Hit it like that and then roll it across. It's easy as that. So what I'm gonna do is take the, the uh, I'm gonna measure from the top of this paper to the top of the ridge. So we have 14 and a half inches right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in the middle, measure another 14 and a half, and then go at the end. That way we know that this is straight. So what I'm doing is basically putting the center of this paper with the center of the ridge, and then that way I know it's straight on both sides. If you guys are gonna be doing it the same day, it's a shed, and you don't have to tack your bottoms, but if you guys are not gonna be doing it on the same day, make sure to tack your bottoms down, because if the wind comes, it'll rip it off. It'll blow it all off. It'll blow your hard work, your hard earned money. So we're gonna go ahead and staple off the bottom and don't be afraid to use too many staples on the bottom man if that stuff comes off it could get whatever if you have sheetrock or anything insulation anything down there in your shed that you have if you do it could get everything off so that's step one all right ladies and gentlemen we got step two. Now step two, we're gonna use two different kinds of metal. We do have a one by three drip metal. This stuff is going to be going along the eave of the roof. And this stuff is going to be going underneath the underlayment, okay? Then you put the underlayment on top. So we're gonna be doing that. And then um, we're gonna be putting on this T-metal now. You, there's a lot of different kinds of metal. Some of them are just 90 degrees. We like to use T-metal. You guessed it, it looks like a T, right? So take a look down that, and that's what we use. That's why they call it a T. They have G metal, T metal, 90 degree. They have all sorts of different kind of metal, but 99% of the time we're using T metal. Now, uh, T metal is gonna go up the rake and we'll show you guys that in a second. But for now, let's go ahead and install this one by three. Make sure you guys take this off. Sometimes they put the tape on the very first one. So it probably won't matter too much here because he's gonna have gutters. But if you have it on the side right here on the rake metal, I mean, it's just trashy and it just nobody likes to see tape, right? All right, so basically what you're gonna do is this one by three, you always tuck it below, below the, the underlayment. Once you put it below, see that? If the water hits it, it'll run off this and go into the gutter. So you wanna flush up to this, uh, the rake piece. We're gonna leave a little uh, a little room for gutters. I like to kind of put your hand under there, that way the gutters can slide behind it. Put one nail, pop in your first nail. Now, if you're by yourself, I like to put the rest of this up on the roof and then go to the other side. That way, if you start nailing right here, the other side, you don't know what it's gonna do. So you always go to the other edge, put one nail on it, and then you can finish off nailing. Pop in one nail on that. Now you're gonna go ahead and put nails every eight inches. Keep your nails as high as you can. You don't wanna, you don't wanna put them at the very bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of it. And when you guys are overlapping these pieces, you're gonna to wanna to do at least six inches on each side. All 
right, guys, now that we got uh, the, the drip metal installed, what we're gonna be doing is putting on the T-metal. Now, sometimes, so this one's cut flush, so we won't have to be doing much trimming on this. And this stuff will go on top. This is gonna be going on top of this, uh, of the underlayment. Come over here. So we're gonna be putting this stuff on top of the underlayment up here. And when you guys come, you start it at the bottom, come to the top, and we're gonna follow this line up. I'd like to describe it with my knife. All right, you're gonna take that line all the way up to the top. You're gonna to pull out the old trusty snips. And you're going to go ahead and follow that, cut that line up to the top. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap the other side over. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and score that line right there. Like this. We're gonna cut it all the way up. Now the reason you cut that off is because when you bend this over, if you don't cut it off, it won't allow you, it'll stick up. So, but in this case, go. Right, guys that leads us to step three uh the starter let me go grab some bundles all right this is probably the most controversial uh product to install i don't know why but uh if you guys don't like it you guys can go ahead and leave right now no i'm just joking but so basically here's how i was learned or here's how i was taught not learned so grab your starter and come down with your nail gun it's really simple guys I always start with this piece first. I do it like that. And I, now don't listen to me. I'm just, like I said, man, I'm just some guy on YouTube. You guys do not have to listen to me, but I know a lot better than a lot of people. So I'll put your first starter down here. We like to go, I don't know, about three quarter of an inch, almost a knuckle right here. Almost a knuckle on the bottom. You feel them till they're about the same. And then you come on along the bottom and do the same thing. And then. You take your nails and you want to nail, you want to nail about, I don't know, about it within an inch of the edge, okay? And you put nails every, um, you're gonna put about, we put about five nails in them. Then you're gonna put this piece on. Now this piece you're gonna go about, I don't know, about three quarters of an inch over. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna use my, that starter or this, this uh, tar line kind of has my gauge see that right there and you could tell right here if you're straight if you're straight you're pretty good now with this you're going to go ahead and put your nails about about right there right so you're going to have put them within a couple inches of the bottom and i know that my first shingle is going to land right here so when you have a keyway right here you don't want to put your nails anywhere within this keyway okay guys so for instance you're going to go we're gonna put five nails on one, two, three, four, and then five. So when you put this down, the nail's a little hot, right? So what you're gonna do is when you have your first shingle down here, there's no nail in the keyway. See that? I'll show you guys when we get there with the first shingles again. But yeah. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some books. You guys haven't seen my uh, how to cut books video. Uh, I'll put up a I'll put up a card up right here in the corner. Now, when you install these though, you're going to um, you're gonna count how many books you want to cut, and you just count starters. So in this case, we have one, two, three starters on here. See, one, two, three pieces of starter, which means. Yep, you guessed it, we're gonna cut three bucks. So I'm gonna show you guys how to cut a book anyways. Basically what you do is you 
you uh, put your knife down here and I'm gonna cut on this point right here. I'm gonna cut this shingle six times. So basically it's a little bit more, but we do have that video that's more in depth, um, but here, check this out. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this book. So you take uh, up, so basically when I'm cutting this, now you kinda wanna lift up. You don't have to cut through both of them. Now that's my first shingle to the book. You line it up, you take it and you cut. This is gonna give you two books with, sh with six shingles. Okay, so you want to be as straight as you as straight as you can. Line your shingles up. And this last one, just kind of eye it, right? And that, my friend, will give you two books. Now you take these, and you go like this, and that's your first book. This is your second book. Now, if you want to cut one, if you just want to cut one book, it's pretty simple. All you do is you use three shingles. So you do your first one, line these up, your second one, and your third one. All right, and that will give you one book. Now let's go ahead and install these. So for that, we're gonna go down here and I'm gonna show you guys that down here. All right guys, now your first shingle, remember how we did nail right here, right? So this first shingle is pretty important, but either way, you line it up, take the bottom, you line it up nice and straight with that, and these corners match up, right? And this, you put one nail within about an inch of the side, Right, and you're gonna put, we're gonna, we use five now, some people use six, some people use four. I like to use five. Two, three, four, five. Now, look, one, two, three, four, five. Again, we didn't put this nail in the keyway because our next shingle is gonna go right here. See that, guys? See that? Now, let me show you something. Now let me let me teach you guys something. All you guys got to do is go down again and hit that subscribe button it's right down below. Now, but real, 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 real talk. Line them up and put your nails in it. And look, here's the beauty in it. We don't have no nails right here because this, the water is going to go in between this line right here. It's called the keyway, right? So again, you don't put nails right here in between the keyway. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue this book all the way up. And now what I like to use, I like to gauge. So when you're gauging these, again, you have a gauge right here. And a lot of people don't use gauges. I don't really know why. They take their gun down and they'll put their hand down here. And then they'll grab their gun and then they go again. Look, dude, if you just have your gauge, your gun is still in your hand. You gauge the bottom of this, you slide it up. Then you take the top of the shingle and it comes to the gauge, right? One down here, one gauge again. And it's always going to be super solid. They gauge it. Gauge it and go again. Now the reason I'm not putting a nail here because I'm gonna go ahead and nail it when I come up. It's less less movement, guys. We're, we're we're using one inch nails on this. He's got tongue and groove up here. That's inch and a half, but we don't want the uh, we don't want the chances. Um, 
Uh, we don't want any nails blowing through or splintering blowing through. So we're gonna get, go ahead and use it. one inch nail. We're gonna pick those nails up if they do drop. All right, guys, so check this out. So these shingles, even though that we got the GAF starter and these GAF shingles, these shingles are longer than the, uh, than the, than the starter. See how it's growing? You guys see that? It's like an inch and a half longer. So in that case, no big deal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece and we are going to span this Now we're gonna go ahead and put shingles all the way across the bottom. See how I'm not... So normally you wouldn't put a nail right there, but, but we're spanning it. Now when you guys get to the top of this, just go ahead and uh, put your last shingle on. Now, some people will wrap it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it though, because I don't like a little bump. So just cut it, cut it along the ridge and call it good. The, uh, the ridge cap will be uh, covering this. Let me show you guys about the nail, the nail pattern that I use. Again, it's five nails. One, two, three. Now notice the last two shingles, or the last two nails I'm putting uh, at the end. Why do I do that? It's just shorter. Look, I'm only dealing with, really, I'm only dealing with 26 inches about, rather than the whole uh, 39 inches, right? So I'm saving 13 inches in steps. Without my, with my gun going over here, what I can do is, you really wanna move, you really wanna move uh, vertically, not horizontally. So you don't wanna put one shingle all the way across and hope it's straight, because it'll take you all day, right guys? So watch, my feet won't move, really. If you, right here and I could do this whole line with moving my feet one time which one two three four five like eight shingles see how I bend over here and see I'm moving my body with it right I'll come back over here and I move my body see that and that's the whole that's the whole you want to move horizontally I mean, you don't want to move horizontally, you want to move vertically. All right guys, so now that you guys got to the rake side, the edge, what do you guys do? Cut it off, what do you, what do, you do, right? A lot of questions, a lot, I've had a lot of people ask me that, what do you do? So I like to just fold it over, right? So look at that, see how I do that? Just let it hang loose over there. Then take a shingle. You're gonna take the top of it, right? The factory edge. Make sure it's a factory edge side, right? You're gonna take it and you're going to put the factory edge out. I like to use the top of the shingle, see? And we line it up. I put my foot at the bottom, then I'm gonna cut this off. See that? Cut it. Cut that one. Now here's the beauty in this. The beauty in this is we're gonna go ahead and use these pieces right here. That piece won't fit. Matter of fact, we have to cut this piece back a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it back. I don't know. About right there. The reason we're cutting it back is because you can't put a shingle right here. See that guys? It's too small. You can't put a shingle in there. Now there's a trick. Some guys will go ahead and go like this. That'll work too. You could do that, but it's not the right, it's not the way to learn, right? So we've done that, but it'll cause a little bump and it'll look kind of trashy. So what you do is you're gonna have to come back. You're gonna have to come back a little bit. 
and add that shingle in there. See that? See that how I did that? Then you have to load it up, put the bullets in here. Oh. I, I can't stress enough how much you, you want to make sure this, this this does not move. If it moves, it's going to look terrible. So cut it like that. Cut that off. Cut that off. Now look how straight that is. I know there's only two shingles left, but guess what? We're still going to go ahead and use that little trick. Cut these last two shingles off. And this side. And that's how you guys do step four. Guys, that leads us to step five and we're out of here, right? It's getting a little bit dark and my tanks, my tank, my tank, my tank, my tank. I can't even speak straight. No, my uh, my gas is running out. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this Z Ridge on. So if you guys haven't ever installed Z Ridge, I've done it a few times. Um, it's made by GAL. And basically what you do is this stuff's kind of a pain if I remember to break up. Yeah, you, know, you gotta almost do it one, one like. Break it up one a piece, right? You gotta break it up like that. And it's called, it comes perforated. You take it like that and you, you basically just bend this stuff up like that, right? I'll show you guys a couple pieces of this. Let's see if I can do more. Dude, look at that, it's all broken. Ooh. All that stuff's broken right there. Yeah, you gotta do one a piece, so. So if you guys see it's broken, any, broken anything, broken shingle, just take it and throw it aside, right? You don't want to use that. We don't, we don't use broken stuff around here, right? We keep it legit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, split these up. We're gonna make a nice pile. Then I'm gonna show you guys how to install this stuff. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the first piece, right? So when you take this D ridge, what you want to do is you want to make this so you want to bend it like that right they want to bend it like that so it comes like this and it, you bend it hence why they call it z-ridge now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a piece of starter okay so what we're going to do on that is we're going to put a piece down here real low and we're going to put this piece of z-ridge we're going to put this right here in the center over this stuff okay now, take off, if you guys see this stuff, make sure to take this stuff off of here. We don't want no callbacks for that, right? We work too hard. We're gonna pull it back so we get some, so we can get a little bite into it. And, I don't have long All right, so that's your first piece. Second piece is going to fold it again. Now, we stick it up. The reason we put this on there so it has a little profile, the same profile as this. If you didn't do this, this would not have the same profile, right? So. So. All right, so we just chalked this up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the middle and meet up in the middle. Hey, GAF, I don't know if you guys are watching, but this stuff's a pain in the neck to install. Why do you guys gotta be so hard on it? All right, so basically here's what we're gonna do. See this line right here? We're gonna go ahead and line this edge up with that. And we put two nails. I put two nails. Right, go ahead and bend this up over. Like that. 
make sure it's flat. Two down. One, two. Just bend it over. So if you put one nail only, first of all, you, it, it helps out with the wind if when it, any wind does ever come out. But if you have one nail right here, and if you come over and you bump it or something, you twist that, see that? So even if you start twisting a little bit, when you look down the ridge, it'll just be kind of wavy. So what we do, you know what we do. come together we like to measure it together come in the middle and put the last piece on now this one you might need a little bit longer now boom we got to go one two three four um, I'm gonna go down and grab a little bit of caulking and uh, we'll be done and uh, and we'll be out of here all right guys well with that we are absolutely done with this roof it came out beautiful I'm glad you guys can make it on this one and see it through the whole video if you guys like what you saw, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you guys have any more ideas on what to do, and you, 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 go ahead and leave the comments down below. Well, without that, we're gonna get the heck out of here, guys. Peace.